Hello, my name is Jeremy McDermott and I'm a software engineer for Northwest Digital Radio and I'm going to be running you through how to get the UDRC configured and ready to go for a DRX1X repeater. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring up our web browser. Um, I'm assuming here that you've already uh, been successfully got our Compass uh, Linux image off of the web and burnt it to an SD card and uh, booted your Raspberry Pi for the first time. And this is uh, something like what you should come up with at that point in time. So we're going to open up our web browser once hopefully and we are going to go to northwestdigitalradio.com And on the uh, right side of the page here, we've got a UDRC menu. And uh, in that UDRC menu is the DR1X installation wiki. And we can click on that. That way we have our directions up here and ready to go. These are the written directions. But more importantly, there are some command lines in here that are uh, much easier to copy and paste uh, than they are to uh, uh, actually be able to uh, have to type them in. I've got a couple of random strings in there that uh, aren't very fun to type in. So we're just going to have this up there and uh, ready to go. Now the first thing we really want to do after that is uh, go and figure out whether our UDRX is being seen by the system. So we're going to go up here to terminal because we're going to type in some command lines here to figure it out. If we go in there and we do an A play minus L, and that's the letter L, we're on step 7 here. Then it's going to show you a list of sound devices in the system. Uh, this BCM2835 also that you may or may not see is uh, the built-in Raspberry Pi uh, output and we don't really care about that. What we really do care about is to make sure that uh, the UDRC card shows up. So in this case it's card 1 that shows that it's UDRC and it says that it's the Universal Digital Radio Controller right here. So that line means that uh, we actually have a UDRC out there and it's being detected and ready to go. Next thing we need to do is we actually need to set up that card um, so that the uh, uh, sound settings are correct for it and uh, set up for the uh, DR1X repeater. In step 10 here on the wiki, we have a command line uh, that will do that for you. So if we go ahead and select this here in the web browser and up in the little uh, gear here, we should be able to pop that down and say copy. Then we would go back to the terminal window we can go ahead and paste this command line in here. Um, and essentially all this does is downloads a uh, script that we have on the web um, and then executes it as root. So this is the URL of the script if you want to go look at it. Um, but for our purposes, we're just going to hit return here. And that's going to execute the script and you'll get all of this output indicating that it's setting up all the mixer and things like that for you. So now your uh, uh, repeater should be set up as far as the sound card goes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the DSTAR repeater application and uh, all the things you need there. So we're going to go to this menu and in the preferences there's add and remove software. You need to go to options and say refresh package lists. It's going to ask you for your password to do this. The default password is raspberry, all lowercase. Um, if you haven't changed it, that's what it's going to be. And you hit OK. And this will go out to our servers and download all the new packages that may be updated and make sure that the system has a complete list of all the packages that it needs. Next, just for good measure, go to Options and check for updates. And the system is going to go ahead and check for updates that uh, we may have made to the operating system, new packages and new features or, or bug fixes that may be installed. In my case, there are no packages available. If you did have packages available, you'd see some in this list and you'd be able to click here on install updates in order to install them. But I'm going to say OK because there's no updates. Now let's go look for the DSTAR repeater packages. If I go and search for DSTAR and hit return, it's 
going to go and uh, search for any packages that have the word D-star in them. And the ones we want to install are this D-star digital voice repeater software GUI components, because that's going to have the GUI configuration tool in it. The digital voice repeater software daemon components, because that has all of the automatic daemons that run. And if you like, you can install the digital voice repeater UDEV rules. It should get pulled in automatically if you don't. And I'm going to go ahead and apply these. And again, it's going to ask for your password, which is Raspberry if you haven't changed it. And it will go out and download and install those packages for us. And you know, the, notice that these now light up and say that they're installed. The other thing we'd like to do is we'd like to get the IRCDDB gateway package in there as long as we're installing stuff. So if we search for IRCDDB, and here we go. We'd like to install the Internet Gateway GUI components and the Internet Gateway daemon components are what we're going to need. And if we apply these, again it wants your password to install software, which is Raspberry by default. and know those packages are installed for you as well. Now we can leave the installer and we need to get a configuration file in here um, to configure DSTAR repeater. We've provided a configuration file, a seed configuration file for you that has most of the common settings set for you so you don't need to worry about it. And in the directions you can see over here under configuration to DSTAR repeater, we've got a command line to go ahead and download that. So again, we're going to copy and paste this thing. And that should download it to this path, Etsy OpenDV D star repeater underscore one. And we can go ahead and check if that's in there by going to the file manager, going out to slash, it's in Etsy. Then we can go down to OpenDV here. And we'll see that DSTAR repeater underscore one is in there. That's the name of the file that configures the uh, DSTAR repeater. So now that we've confirmed it's there, we can go and configure uh, all of your personal settings for it because we can't uh, account for everything like your call sign and everything. Um, we're going to do this with the GUI configuration tool, which is this command line here. Again, we can copy and paste this for ease of use. And that brings up our GUI configuration tool. So the most important thing is the call sign. Uh, the call sign of my repeater is KF7LDG Lima Delta Golf and we'll put that in the call sign and the gateway. All of the rest of this stuff should be okay. The other things that you really need to be concerned about are over here in the modem setting. This is going to be configured to sound card, but if you hit the configure button, you'll come up with all of these uh, additional stuff. You really don't need to worry about much of this other than, uh, well, make sure that your TX device is UDRC. And in RX inversion in here, um, notice that there's a note in here that says if you're running a two meter repeater, you need to change this RX inversion to off. 
On a 440 repeater, this RX inversion is on for the DR1X. So if you've set the frequency of your DR1X to 2 meters, this RX inversion needs to be off. If it's 440, which in my case I'm on 434.910, um, my RX inversion needs to be on. And again, make sure that both the TX device and the RX device say UDRC in there. We're going to go ahead and hit OK on here. and go over to the controller tab. And the controller tab, we want to make sure this says UDRC. Um, and the config in here um, is going to set what the default state of your DR1X is. So if you notice over here, we've got your choices in there. Um, we, and uh, configuration one is auto RX, fixed FM. Configuration two is auto RX, auto TX. Uh, TX, um, etc., and so forth. So each of these one through four corresponds to these configs one through four. Five is for hotspots, so you don't need to worry about that. I'm going to leave this at two, um, which is the default, and uh, it should do fine that way. That's really all the basic configuration you need for the repeater to keep it up and going. And you go file and save, and it's going to say the changes will not take effect until the DSTAR repeater is start restarted and we can exit out of this application here. And that's really the configuration of it. Now we're going to need to restart the DSTAR repeater application on your Raspberry Pi. And it is running into in the background. So we're going to use a command called system control. And it's this command line right here. And again, we can copy and paste that if we want. and that should start up your repeater for you. If you want the system to start the DSTAR repeater at boot, which I highly recommend, then you can use this command line to make it start at boot. And it will give you some verbiage there. You can check your repeater and see if it is up and run, if the process is up and running by doing a sudo system control status dstar repeater at one. And you can see that everything is uh, screwed up because the, uh, oh, excuse me, it's dstar repeater d at one. And you can see that it's active and running since 56 seconds ago. So again, it's pseudo system control status dstar repeater d at 1, not dstar repeater like I showed you before. So you can see that it is up and running and started and ready to go. And that should get your repeater up and running. I would uh, show you um, how that exactly uh, works uh, in testing it, um, but this machine is not hooked up to a uh, real D-Star repeater at this point in time. But that is enough to get you up and running and help you get the packages installed. Uh, remember that we have the support list that you can throw questions out on. Um, this uh, tutorial does not encompass setting up IRC DDB gateway. Um, as the uh, uh, wiki says in here, there is a uh, Yahoo group uh, documentation section with an IRC DDB tutorial in it that you can do. We may end up making a video eventually to help you out with that, um, but that's really beyond the scope of UDRC specific stuff. So again, if you'd like more support, please get on our email list and send stuff out, and uh, good luck.